When I was a young kid, I used to be hooked on the goofy cartoon. So my dad would come in and ray this, ray that, and I'd be just glued to the TV. And one particular morning he came in and it was a hay goof and I just spun my head around and it stuck. So it's been with me forever. I wasn't that interested in racing as a young kid. I was fairly small in stature. I started riding mini bikes, trail riding as a four year old, sort of self-taught. Dad pretty much took me out most weekends. But as far as riding style, that was pretty much natural. Um, time went on, I uh, did some junior racing, did quite okay there and then moved into the seniors and the seniors progressed really quickly. Uh, I think I was probably one of the youngest Victorian A graders at the age of about 16 and uh, I think I won four or five Victorian titles in total. 1982 I was 18, I won the Australian 125 championship and 1983 was Mr Motocross. My riding style was probably loose they'd say, jump wise and so forth more so than a lot of the guys in that time. I think the way it's progressed now, the guys are very fluent and manoeuvre a lot across the bike. But yeah, I was fairly fluent on the bike. I didn't have the muscle to be able to move the bike around like some of the older guys did. And uh, yeah, that probably got me through, I think. It was uh, probably one of the biggest years. It was the 10th anniversary of Mr Motocross. So the field was red hot. It was Stephen Gall, Anthony Gunter, Trevor Williams, Jeff Leesk. I was probably the closest with Leesky. We get along well. We could socialise and pretty much have a good time, but on the track it was fierce as hell. So it was competitive. We came out at the first round and I was the youngster. I was 18, just turned 19 for the year. Just won an Australian title the previous year. No one expected me to be successful on a 500. And we lined up and I thought, yep, we're all human and we're all capable of winning this. And I thought if I can stay fit and stay healthy and, uh, and progress through the year, we, well, there's no reason why I can't win it along with any of the other guys that had won it in the past or the future. So I won three out of the four races, got second in the next and had a good lead in the championship. Second round wasn't too bad. We were competitive. I think we were still in the lead. Third round, we had a bummer of a round. Ran into some trouble with the officials over there. Gawley actually uh, protested saying I'd passed them under the yellow flag, which we tried to defend. Lost the points, so lost a bit of the points lead. Him being a four-time winner, obviously me being the young kid on the block, um, yeah, definite rivalry, definite. Um, the incident we had with us getting protested with from his team and so forth put a little bit of a damper on the relationship, I think. But look, I if it's all Gawley now, we're, we're good mates. Um, went to Queensland for the fourth round. We built up this new fandangled bike. The bike we built up, we had no time to test, and it was unsuccessful. It was shocking. So that was a, a shocking weekend there. We got to the final round and it was double points. The crowds, to see that now at an outdoor race is probably very doubtful, but um, back in 83 they were 10 deep all the way around the Broadford circuit and the promotion back then was just awesome for the Mr Motocross series. Third race, I got to the lead, came around with about five laps to go and I see Gawley laid on the side of the track and he wasn't moving, wasn't getting up at all. So that was it, I had a grin from ear to ear and I had all the Victorian crowd cheering and carrying on and I thought from there on, well, Last race I only had to finish in the top nine, I think. So I finished third for the event, won the series. So became the youngest guy to win Mr Motocross in the, uh, in the history and uh, was fairly proud and it was a great moment, pretty much knocking Gawley off his perch. The following week was the Australian Motocross titles. 500 class started and we had another flat tyre, but this time I rolled the actual tyre off the rim and in doing so, stamped my foot on the ground, the handlebar came down snapped my knee, passed full extension. So I actually took a couple of years off, didn't ride at all, and then decided to have a ride of my own and rode a couple of events, won a couple of Victorian races, won a Victorian title on a borrowed bike, and trying to get back to racing sooner than I was fit enough to do so. And at the old Broadford where I'd won Mr Motocross, practice, came around the corner, same sort of thing, whacked my knee, snapped it again, and that was it. I thought, yeah, I felt it go. I said, that's it. Went back to the pits and said, I'm not riding again and I probably never rode a motorcycle for 10 years after that. Uh, from then on it was, okay, we need an income and uh, back to the old trade of panel beating. So I'm still there now managing uh, a smash repair shop and uh, yeah, that's where life is now. Socialising, family, lovely wife, two daughters and uh, try and get out and uh, try and ride with the boys as often as possible and we just love it, it's great fun. The Australian scene, I try and get to whatever races that are local. The sport, I think, has just grown tremendously. Absolutely miss the racing. I would, at some stage, love to get back to the bikes in regards to management or something like that, but if opportunity uh, arose, I'd certainly look at it. Uh, I'd look at back now at, uh, as a 19-year-old kid, I couldn't have asked for anything more. I think I had this insight that whatever I wanted to do, I was going to do, and decided I'm going to be Australian champion. 
I wanted to be Mr. Motocross. I did that in the second year. Wished I had got to America, but uh, injuries pretty much got in the way there. But as far as the career goes, look, it could have gone on longer, but what I had, I'm, I'm very pleased with. As a 90-year-old kid to have won what I won, a lot of guys in 20 years don't get to that level. So being proud of what you've actually achieved, I can't be too disappointed. Uh, what I've got, I'm happy with, um, and life moves on.